Okay, in this video, we're gonna be doing Calc AB problem set 91. The problems and the playlists are in the description below, and let's take a look at the problems. Number one, evaluate the integral from one to two of the quantity three x minus five to the fourth. I'm gonna do u substitution on this. Um, so I'm gonna choose the thing in parentheses. So I'm gonna say that u is equal to three x minus five. Now, if u is three x minus five, then du is three dx, or one third du is equal to dx. Remember, you always have to replace dx. That's like the main thing that I see people forget. We also need to change the bounds, which is actually the next most common thing that I see. So I like to change them uh, doing the top bound first and then the bottom bound, and then just put them right back where they came from. So uh, if x is equal to two, then u is gonna be uh, three times two and minus five. So that's gonna be one. So there's the work for that. Um, and then if x is equal to one, then u is gonna be three times one minus five, which is gonna be uh, negative two. And so now what we wanna do is we want to rewrite the integral entirely in terms of u, including the bounds and including du. So let's do that. So we'll have the integral from negative two to one, and then uh, it will become u to the fourth. And then when we replace dx, we're replacing it with one third du. I'm gonna pull the one third out and then put the du at the end. All right, now we just have to reverse the power rule, use the fundamental theorem. So plus one times the reciprocal, we're gonna get one third times one fourth, oh, sorry, one fifth u to the fifth. And then we're going from negative two to one, plug in one. Uh, so, I mean, one third times one fifth is one fifteenth. Plug in one, we just get one to the fifth, which is one, minus plug in negative two, we get the quantity negative two to the fifth. All right, and then we just have to simplify this. So negative two to the fifth is negative 32, but it's minus negative 32, so we'll get plus 32. So we're gonna have uh, 1 15th of one plus 32, which is gonna be 33 over 15, which is gonna be 11 over five. That's how we can do the problem. Let's take a look at the next thing. Table problem. Use the table of values for a twice differentiable function f of x to answer the questions. All right, step one, or part one, part a. Approximate f prime of 12. So you look at the table, 12 is between 10 and 14. We're gonna use the slope of the secant line. The most important, well, I mean, that's the most important thing. But the thing that people screw up is they don't say approximately. f prime of 12 is approximately. And then you like to show the work, right? So I'm gonna just show f of 14 minus f of 10 over 14 minus 10. That's my work. And now I'm looking at the table, uh, f of 14 is one, f of 10 is five. So one minus five is negative four. And then 14 minus 10 is four. So we have negative four over four, and that's definitely negative one. That's all you need to do. You don't have to justify it. You just show your setup and then you get your answer. All right, if g of x is equal to 10 minus two x, we wanna to try to prove that g of x equals f of x for some x between two and six. What I really like about this problem is that two and six are adjacent in the table. They're right next to each other, which means we don't have to worry about like finding an interval. They've given us the interval. Here's how I tackle this every time. I'm gonna create a new function that I'm gonna call d of x for the difference between f and g. And as I go through it, if you don't know why I'm doing that, it'll become clear. So I've let d of x equal f of x minus g of x. I really want d of x to be continuous because I wanna use the intermediate value theorem on it. So I need to show that d of x is continuous because like on its own, why would it be, right? d of x is continuous though because g of x is a polynomial, right? So that's just, 10 minus 2x, that's definitely continuous. So I'm gonna say g of x is continuous. I guess you could say because it's a polynomial if you want, but I'm just gonna say continuous. f of x is twice differentiable, therefore differentiable. Differentiability implies continuity. So I'm gonna say f is differentiable, which implies continuous. All right, so now we know that d of x is continuous. I wanna use the intermediate value theorem. I need to know d of two and I need to know d of six. d of two is gonna be f of two minus g of two. Uh, f of two is negative four from the table. G of two is uh, six if you plug it in. So we get uh, negative four minus six, which is negative 10. D of six is f of six minus g of six. F of six from the table is three. G of six is negative two. So we have three minus negative two, which is gonna be five. Now we can say by the intermediate value theorem that D of x is equal to zero for sure. So I'm gonna say, since d of two is less than zero, is less than d of six, d of x equals zero for some x between two and six by IVT. So we're not done with the problem though, because d of x was not a part of the question, we created it. So we have to go back and get, you know, why is f of x equal to g of x? Well, if 
d of x is equal to zero, that means f of x minus g of x, which is d of x, is equal to zero. If f of x minus g of x equals zero, that means that f of x equals g of x for some x between two and six. And we did it. That's how you can tackle that problem every time. It's always like, if you need to show two functions are equal, consider making a third function, show that that function equals zero, and then go from there. I recommend that technique. You know, there's other things you can do, but it requires way more argumentation and nobody wants to do that. All right, let's look at the next part. Use this, the same values in the same table. Approximate the integral from two to 14 f of x dx with a trapezoidal sum. All right, so these we're always gonna start by writing the integral that we're approximating. And again, it's an approximation, right? So tangent lines approximate things, you use secant line slopes, average rate of change to approximate things, um, and then you will approximate definite integrals. Got to use the approximately equal to symbol. All right, so trapezoid, it's going to be uh, one half, and then uh, the height, which is from two to six, so that's going to be four. The sum of, uh, oh man, I got it wrong. The sum of the base, this is a disaster. The sum of the bases is negative four plus three, which is negative one, but I accidentally did four. Uh, four plus three. So I'm gonna have to fix this. This is gonna change a couple of things maybe. I mean, we'll see. What color should I, I'm just gonna use this. So I think this is a negative one when we add those together. All right, so that's gonna change my final answer. Uh, I'll try to do it on the fly. Uh, so that's the first trapezoid. The second trapezoid, there's always a one half. Uh, we have to go from six to 10. Six to 10 is four, so that's uh, the height. And then the sum of the bases is eight. Then we have to do one half because it's a trapezoid. We have to go from 10 to 14, that's four units. Um, and then the sum of the bases is six. So if I add these up, I get uh, 12 plus 16 is 28, I think. Uh, and then I have to subtract two. So I think the actual answer is 26. So let me change that. Typos, it's not even a typo. I just like outright read the table wrong. And I checked it over, so good for me. What did I say here? 26, I think. I don't know. Check, check that one over. All right. The next part that we want to do, we want to evaluate the integral from one to five of f prime of two x dx. So this is a problem we can definitely like do. We don't have to approximate it. We're just evaluating it. We're going to do u substitution and try to change the whole thing into f prime of u so I can fundamental theorem it. So u is going to be two x, which means that uh, du is two dx or one half du is equal to dx. If x is equal to five, then u is gonna be two times five or 10. If x is equal to one, u is gonna be two times one because u is equal to two times x. So two times one, so two. Uh, we can rewrite our integral, right? So we have to replace the bounds. We have to replace uh, our dx, which is one half du, pull the one half out, change our bounds. This is our integral. All right, we can just straight fundamental theorem this. This is like, this is the fundamental theorem, right? The integral of f prime gets you back to f. So we're gonna have one half um, f of u, and then we have to go from two to 10. Um, and then what we wanna do is just read the value. So it's gonna be one half, what you get when you plug in 10, so f of 10 minus f of two. Um, so we have that. And then we can just read the values in the table. Uh, f of 10 looks like it is, uh, what was f of 10? f of 10 is five. Um, and then f of two is negative four. So five minus negative four, which is gonna be uh, nine over two. And that's it. So hopefully I fixed part C there. Uh, the rest of it I think went pretty well. That's the entire problem set. I hope this was helpful and good luck.